Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am here in Moab, Utah to attend Bronco Off Rodeo and I cannot wait to show you what this off rodeo is about because Moab is one of my favorite places and adding a Bronco to that just sounds wonderful. If you follow the channel, you know that I've already attended the Nevada Off Rodeo. So when I had somebody invite me on as a guest to attend the Moab Off Rodeo, I jumped on the opportunity because we all know Moab is my most favorite place on earth. Now the base camp is completely different than the one in Nevada. There's actually a building with a shop. It's nicely decorated. You know, there's air conditioning heat where the base camp in Nevada, there wasn't really an indoor building at all. Not only is the base camp set up differently, but the overall experience was a completely different experience experience than the one that I had in Nevada. I'm not saying it was worse. I'm not saying it was better, but it was completely different, which leads me to think that each off rodeo experience is very unique in itself. Two specific things that come to mind that were different. In Nevada, we went back to base camp for lunch and dinner, where on Moab, we had lunch out on the trail near a cave, but came back for dinner. Another thing that was different in Nevada, you had a little bit of a teaching time where you could volunteer and try out different modes of the Bronco, where in Moab, you did not have that. Neither of these differences are negative in any way. Those are just two of the main things that I noticed that were different about the two. The base camp is set up beautifully, and the surroundings in Moab is second to none. After everyone was checked in, everyone huddled up as a group, did introductions of the instructors and the attendees, and just kind of did a briefing of what to expect for the day. Another unique thing is they didn't have us in a big group of like 30 people. They actually had us in smaller groups, no more of seven or eight Broncos, which made it much more of a personal experience with our instructors and the people in the group. Another difference between the Moab and Nevada location is in Moab, you actually get to drive the Bronco out on a regular road for about 10 to 20 miles to the trailhead of Dome Plateau. Now this is nice if you don't have a Bronco because you will get to drive it in different terrains and see how the car handles on road and off road. And you need to be prepared because you will be out on the trails the entire day and there are no bathrooms out in the middle of Utah. So just keep that in mind before you book the Moab location. Know that if you need a bathroom at all during your trail time, you are not going to find one. Not only do you get to drive the Bronco in different trains over rocks and sand and road, but the instructors actually take time to teach you things about the Bronco you may not know about and also about off-roading. So if you're new to off-roading, I highly recommend attending an off-rodeo. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Okay. All right. So we typically stop people right here just to show them that your Bronco can hold almost the Looking on the outside, it doesn't look like you're tipped at all. Right? Yeah. Back over there somewhere. So we're thinking about the spatial awareness of the vehicle as we come through. So let's walk up a little further and see what we can see. Let me ask you a question. Can I? Yeah, I don't think it's that locker. That's so correct. Back to the rear is locked up. All right, let's take that rear locker off just so we want to let everybody see what it does. Everybody else will have your rear, your rear locker on when you come through, but I want y'all to get a, a glimpse of this. All right, so nice and steady. Just come forward. This is four low only. Keep coming. All right, stop there. 
Now, what, what I really like about what uh, Brad did right there was he let those tires spin briefly, very briefly, to see if he was gonna be able to, if they would hook up and take him forward. He didn't give it more gas. He didn't back off the gas. Oh, it's a magic button. carry a little more momentum yeah i like to send it so it's all good <laughs> the number one rule you're not supposed to do right right we're gonna make sure we avoid this rock right here with that rear tire so he's swinging a little wide mandy's got you What a view. You're gonna move forward about a foot and now start to turn towards me. Good, and then all the way towards me. There you go. All right, come on up. We're gonna bring this tire up into a full droop. No. Close. All right, close. Okay, so go ahead and put it into park. Engage your parking brake. Every one of these Broncos are going to be able to do all the obstacles with no problem. If you live in Florida, I know I heard a lot of people from Florida, you may not need this stay bar disconnect. You may not need this in the Badlands or the first edition. But he, we have Brad in a Badlands, so we have the stay bar disconnect. And this is very unique in the fact that you can do this under load. So he does not need to engage the stay bar disconnect down here to prepare for this obstacle. So this is under load, we have full droop, right? This is the full droop. And then the tire here is compressed. It's fully stuffed into that wheel well. So we're trying to get the traction right. We're doing traction and clearance. We're trying to get traction. We're obviously not getting it here. So Brad, So my name is Clayton Skelsey uh, from Largo, Florida. I came all the way out here to Moab. I mean, the, the best part about it is really learning about the vehicle. You know, you can really understand like how to use the vehicle, uh, the different components of it, you know, whether it's a rear or front locking differential, stuff like that. I mean, the terrain in Moab too, it, it's very different uh, than a lot of areas. Um, being so close, like you can see all the snow on the mountains and everything and pretty much be out in the desert, you know, in 80 degree weather, so. Um, definitely recommend Moab. I haven't checked out the other places, but as far as location go, I think this is really the best it gets. So we've been out here for three days now, and next couple of days we'll go up to Telluride. But yeah, we just love the area, and it's definitely worth it. I'm Allison. I'm from Tampa. Um, today was absolutely incredible. I 
normally avoid the craziness and the obstacles and I feel like that's what I always do and today I got to kind of suck it up and stop being a, a baby and I got to do some wild stuff and I feel way more like confident. Yeah, I learned all kinds of stuff. I spent a lot of time off-roading in different areas and different terrain, but it's the first time we did any sort of rock crawling. Uh, so I learned how to, you know, pick my lines better, how to kind of plan ahead and kind of look ahead in the trail and find out where I'm going and kind of make sure the vehicle gets into the right tracks and that kind of stuff. I also learned a lot about train management and and making sure that we're, you know, taking care of the train and the trails so that they don't get shut down. It's one of those type of things that you want this to be around for everybody for years to come. So for me, that's an important part of it as well. And what better way to do it than in a Bronco? Keep slow, lots of brake pressure. Passenger side, keep coming. Keep coming, nice and slow, passenger side. Beautiful. Passenger, uh -oh, keep, there you go, there you go. Nice and slow, here's your crest. Slow. Real gentle, you let it ease down. We're gonna let it sit down nice and pretty. You're doing perfect. Come on forward. That's a nice controlled descent. Keep coming. And now we've got that departure angle. We want to set that back that tire down easy like Sunday morning. That's beautiful. That's right. I know, I'm like, that's your slogan, huh? That's how we prevent uh, that's how we prevent breakage is to is to drive in this the very deliberate controlled manner. Keep let's hold right here, Bronco two. So another good rule is we're gonna allow that Bronco in front of us to get about three quarters of the way down the hill. When you're ascending a hill or descending a hill, give them about three quarters of the room from a safety standpoint so that you don't end up, you know, right behind them. Beautiful, look at you. After spending a few hours on the trail, it was time to break for lunch where we had a picnic type lunch beside a cave. It was gorgeous, the surroundings were beautiful. We had sandwiches, chips, cookies, and drinks. Another thing to note about the Moab Off Rodeo is the trail that you're on the entire day named Dome Plateau is actually a public trail. So it is not on private property like the Texas or the Nevada Off Rodeo. All that means is people out in the public can go and use this trail. So you're going to run into people. But I found this kind of helpful because it teaches you trail etiquette, how to properly tell people who's behind you, what to expect in the front. And overall, I was happy with it. Totally messing with his wife. Go faster! No, no, no. you gotta go. Keep coming. Keep coming, keep coming. Nice and steady. Good job. You drive too slow. You gotta send it a little bit more. You did that. great. You did great. How does it feel not getting stuck? Feels good, you know? It's hard work, but somebody has to do it. <laughs> what happens? Mean. So use your trail sight, because you're gonna wanna put the passenger tire right here.
Hey everybody, my name is Brian Harris. I am the lead trail guide at the uh, Bronco Off-Rodeo here in Moab. Now, one of the things that I love about the Bronco Off-Rodeo is so many people get a vehicle uh, and you buy this really amazing machine in a Ford Bronco and then you don't fully understand all of its capability and, and you need to, to have a frame of reference about what all it can do. Bronco Off-Rodeo is an amazing place to come to so that you can learn how to use your vehicle in a safe, smart way that protects the environment, protects the vehicle, and is a world of fun. Some of the most important driving skills that you can learn when you're operating an incredible machine like this are, are pedal control, right? vision, being able to look downfield and understand the lines, making a line selection and controlling that pedal uh, so that you have that nice continuous rolling contact as you move up. We teach you how to do that here on ledges that are uh, beginner all the way to some pretty significant and advanced. I don't want to give all the good secrets because we got some amazing obstacles, but I promise you when you leave here, you're going to be a better driver. After spending a full and fun day out on the trails, it was time to head back to base camp and have dinner where there was live music. You also have a little bit more time to shop and just look around the area. Now, do I recommend the Moab Off Rodeo? Absolutely. I learned a ton and I've already attended an off rodeo and I'm sort of an avid off road person, but the instructors are so knowledgeable. They teach you about trail conservation, trail etiquette, and just everything about the Bronco. So overall, the Moab off rodeo experience was amazing and I highly, highly recommend for you to check them out. Today was an absolute blast. If you guys have not done an off-rodeo location, I recommend Moab. We all know how much I love Moab and combining Bronco with that has just been amazing. The scenery is perfect. The Bronco, the learning experience, I mean, it's awesome. I love the off-rodeo experience. You guys, be sure to like and subscribe. I have more videos ahead. Be sure to check out the old Florida event that's happening in May. We have a bunch of people signing up and you should check it out. So until next time, I'll see you later. <laughs> I'm gonna put that at the very end of the video. You Oh, please. Out of this whole thing, she's getting like 10 seconds of right. beautiful content. Come on. Oh, no, I've been tuning you out all day. <laughs> <laughs>